Hey guys, Carl White here, Loan Officer Freedom, number one podcast for loan officers. We used to say in North America, Adriana, it's now worldwide. We are the number worldwide. one worldwide. Look at number that one podcast for loan officers in the world. So, uh, so it is an honor, honor, honor to to hold that. And guys, uh, we didn't make that happen. You made that happen, and you made it by sharing this with your friends, asking us great questions, helping us with the content. Uh, and even uh, even uh, coming in on the show as as uh, one of our uh, people that we have on the one of our guests, so it's a true honor. And I've got one of my dearest friends, just somebody that I am just amazed with. I mean, I just <laughs> just incredible story. Uh, Adriana Bates, uh, branch manager, loan officer, just just having an epic, epic, epic career. Uh, and you haven't been doing this that long, Adriana. I mean, not not. Yeah. You, know, you have to remember, I'm an old fart, you know, so, uh, <laughs> so you haven't been doing this yeah, that long. Six and years. Six years, and, and you are mm-hmm. just cranking. So uh, we're talking about uh, the episode that we're talking about. This is actually part two of part of, of, uh, of uh, and again, this was kind of a controversial subject, and we debated about uh, bringing this one up, uh, but so many people were asking about it, and we thought, you know, it's, we're going to risk it. I think we can totally pull this off, and it comes across the way that we want it to. And the topic is, again, this is part two in the series of how do I know I need to transition either where I'm working at or who I'm working with or, or maybe the issue is myself. Like maybe the company is not the problem. Maybe I'm the problem. Maybe I work for a great company. So this is about if you're looking to make a transition from one company to the next, things aren't going well. And again, we're not going to be, we're not talking about any company going from or heading toward or anything like that. This is a, a very general topic that so many people are asking about. Uh, and since so that's what I think we're pulling it off. So I, I think we did. Yeah. So in, in part one, uh, we talked about um, how, how do I know I need to change? And am I the issue or is the company the issue? How do I need to know? And then once I've identified that maybe it is the company, if that's the issue, like, and we talked about things as, uh, you know, it, it, are, are they closing my loans on time? Uh, will management uh, constantly make improvements to the workflow? Uh, do they uh, do they do they help me grow? Uh, are they doing things to actually hold me back because they don't want any one loan officer getting too big and having too much production because mm-hmm. that that threatens the company? Uh, do they hold me accountable for daily, weekly, quarterly, and yearly activities? Do they set up a plan for me? And uh, if the answer to all those things are no, and I go okay it's time to make a transition. Where do I go? So we talked about that a little bit and, um, yeah. And what you look for if you're yeah. identifying where, where you need to make a switch to. Yep. All right. And, um, and then on this one, uh, on this episode, what we're going to start talking about is dealing with the fear. So, and again, this is just a brief recap, Adrian, in your own personal story, uh, which was on episode one, we talked about, that when you made your transition, a lot of people have the fears mm-hmm. of, gee, I'm going to suffer for six months or a year, and can I, can I handle that? In your particular case, that didn't happen because uh, mm-hmm. on, on month one of the switchover, you closed five. Month two after you switched, you closed 12. Month three, you closed 16. And, and I, I think you said you had like 84, uh, 84 yep. apps? App- a- applications taken, yeah, from from so within the two months of my transition, eighty four applications, which, which which is amazing, and and obviously these aren't just like you know these aren't just apps that'll never close. You're closing them, right? Yeah, you, 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 this stuff is closing, and so so uh, and again, uh, uh, just as a quick recap, we have the show notes to this available for the first episode and the second e- episode, and if you want a copy of the show notes. Uh, if you'll just go to loanofficerstrategycall.com, loanofficerstrategycall.com, and uh, schedule your strategy call. There's no cost mm-hmm. for this. And if you'd like to speak with Adriana in particular, just mention that in your comments on that, and we'll let you speak to Adriana. But either way, no matter what you do or who you talk to, uh, we'll get you a copy of these uh, show notes, which is a step-by-step plan. I love this stuff. All right, enough with the recap. So dealing with the fear, Adriana, mm-hmm. some, some, if somebody's thinking about making a move, uh, to any company, right? We're not picking on companies for any company from any company. One of the biggest fears that I hear is my current referral partners may not use me if I switch companies. What do we do about that? So 
and this is and this is the fear when I experienced this fear is when I ultimately made the decision, you know what, I found a company that I think will better suit my growth and my needs. I need to make the switch. So these are all things that might not hit one by one. They might hit all at the same time. You know, these are all things, and this is from my personal, these are my personal fears or insecurities. So they may be different from you. You know, one of my fears was, okay, my referral partners might think something's going on and I'm not secure and my fulfillment not, might not be there. And, you know, and she's, and she's jumping ship. You know, they might not have witnessed because I am such a good salesperson, the turmoil that I was going through on the back end or on some of the things that were happening at my previous company, you know? So I, oh, I personally felt and went through these thoughts in my head, will my referral partners decide to use another lender because I'm in the middle of a transition? What you do about it, you know what? You really sell your team. And we'll talk about this in a couple more sections. There is a transition team in place, or there better be if you are switching to a company, they better have a team already put in place that knows the systems, can deliver on your promises, and really, really explains the loan process to you from start to finish. So you sell your team. You say, you know what? This is, you know, and you have to have these conversations with, with your referral partners. I believe in full transparency. And you need to tell them, this is why I'm making the change. This is how it will benefit you and the clients that you refer to me. Yeah. So, um, so did you, did, 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 is that an unfounded fear about my referral partners? I mean, Cause one thing I've always thought of is like, number one, I never promoted my company that I'm working for per se. I mm -hmm. promote me, Carl White. It's like mm -hmm. Carl White Incorporated, so to speak. Sure. And, and, uh, you know, I'm a branch manager to a mortgage mm -hmm. company. And uh, just being honest, I, you know, I don't promote that, the, the, the company's an, I'm not gonna mention mm -hmm. the company, it's an awesome company, it's a great company. Um, but that's not what I promote. I promote Carl White Incorporated, mm -hmm. right, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I were to, it, you know, if somebody changes companies, if you're, if you're like, if you're Adriana and you're, you're selling, quote, the Adriana Bates team, mm -hmm whether you work for one company, I always thought nobody really cares, right? They just care about well, the results. Same thing as if on a ref, our referral partners, sure. if our favorite real estate agent switches from, you know, sure. whatever, Remax over to Keller, from Keller, Keller to Remax, we don't sure. care. So I agree to that. However, there are certain companies that don't allow your particular branding. So there may be a company that really pushes, hey, you are the face of company XYZ. So company XYZ is branded all over you. Your email address is Adriana Bates at company XYZ. Uh, your phone line is directly tied to company XYZ. So in, in your case where you're branding Carl White, then I don't think you necessarily need to make such a big deal about the transition to them. You could say, hey, my contact information is the same. You know what? The, the, the man that lends me my paper is just changing or whoever I'm backed by is, is changing because there will be your new parent company's information on some disclosures. Yeah. There will, you know, so you do want to be, you don't want necessarily your referral partners to be caught off yeah. guard in that case. However, um, if you are, particularly in the fact, if your contact information is changing, you need to be transparent about that, that switch and why it's a better thing for them and their clients. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. What about, what about getting paid on our, on our uh, production of my pipeline? I know that's a big mm -hmm. fear and I'm probably one of yours too. I'm sure you had a it was Yeah, it was huge. I, I think what you, you get nervous about that, you know, hey, again, and we'll talk about this, you need to read your LO comp agreement and what you signed when you did join company X or whatever company you're with and see what legally you will be paid on or what you won't be paid on. And it's different from company to company. So if you don't understand some of that legal jargon and need help, I would definitely recommend seeking out legal you know, support that can walk you through that and tell you what legally you're entitled to and what you're not. Yeah, because this, this is not chump change, right? This is serious. No, that's your livelihood. Yeah, that's you know? your livelihood. What, yeah. what about, you know, I hear this a lot. Gee, it's just not a good time to make a switch. Yeah. I mean, is it ever a good time to do anything? You know, I always laugh at this because I have two little boys. So, you know, you always compare this to, is it a good time to ever have a child? You'll never feel fully prepared um, to make any type of large life change. However, if you think about it, in the beginning of the spring months, when you can see that uh, your production is starting to really pick it up and the spring market is, is looking awesome, do you want to struggle through some of the same fulfillment issues or management issues or support issues that you've had at that company as your business doubles, triples in size just due to market change? Or would you rather cut bait, lean on a transition team, lean on a solid you know, support and operational staff 
and then, you know, flourish in your glory. You know what I mean? And then just make it rain and, and, and really enjoy that spring market to the fullest. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I totally agree. And you know, you, you brought another thing. And again, I'm just uh, reading off of your notes here that, uh, that we're giving to everybody that wants them. Um, the one thing that we really have to do is keep it very clear in our mind, the current struggle that we currently have. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not that something just went wrong yesterday that might work itself out. This has just been an ongoing struggle and you can experience a little bit of, uh, of discomfort or pain now in moving to a long-term solution, or you can keep living with that same thorn in your side and it never going away. And it's just getting, it's festered. It's just, it's worse and worse and worse. And, and to interrupt you, Carl, remember in episode one, we did talk about this. This isn't a instant rash, you know, remember use emotion, use logic versus emotion in these decisions. You have set out a expectation sheet of uh, whatever, whether it's three months where you expect the change to six months where you expect the change and the change hasn't been met. So this is not a, oh my gosh, this situation happened today. It's time to make a switch. This yeah, is I'm a out, well Bob, thought. Here. Yes, this right, is a right. well thought out and truly using the logic side of your brain versus the emotion side. Yeah, that's a, that is a great point, which is which is hard to do sometimes. So that's a that's a great point. Oh, so, you're talking to a hundred D, a hundred I, zero S, zero C. So trust me, I deal with that emotion logic struggle every day. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so I've dealt with the fear part of it. Uh, let's let's transition here for a little bit. Uh, in how do I prepare? So I'm, I've made a decision, I've picked out the company, I've dealt with my fears, uh, and I wrote them down, I'm identified them, sure. I looked at solutions for my fears, and now I'm preparing to make the, to make the change. And, and a recommendation on that, Carl, is when you've identified solutions with your fears, you need to post those somewhere or have them readily available because those fears are not just one and done. They are ongoing every day. When you're in that gray area, I hate to call it a gray area, but you are because you may or you may not have necessarily told your current management staff yet. So you're still kind of, I hate to say it, but living a little bit of a double life. Um, those fears will happen a lot and they will continue, continue to continue to, you know, that monkey on the shoulder that you always reference, he turns into like a 10,000 pound gorilla during this time. So he's there pretty heavy. You need to lean on people that support you, meaning you're coaching if you coach or if you have you know, some sort of business coach, life coach, uh, particularly a mortgage coach, that's when you really need to lean on these people and other maybe people in your network that you really trust and, and, and they'll be there to encourage you through those times. So you've made that decision in your head, whether you, you have told your current management staff or not, you really need to start preparing. The number one area that I can recommend putting all of your eggs or all of your activity is in making sure your database is complete, accurate, and accessible for you. Now, a lot of, maybe some producers may know this or may not, if the company that you are working for um, provides you a CRM, they own that CRM. They own the contents of that CRM. So you may not be able to export anything out of that currently. Um, you, You more than likely will not have access once you're Uh, once you do decide to announce your transition. So if you can somehow have a backup, whether that's another CRM that you're utilizing, um, for example, like Buffini's referral maker, or even as simple down to an Excel spreadsheet, if you have all of that information elsewhere, you need to make sure that it's up to date. Um, On top of that, any forms or procedures or systems that you've created that you know works well for you, for example, the DSP or Steady Eddy form or whatever, you know, whatever material that you have, make sure that you have that on some sort of storage device that's not on your company computer if you are using a company computer. So like a tracking, like your, your, your activity tracking. And again, I, Mm -hmm. you know, we just want to make sure we put this out. So, you know, always do things that's legal. So if you have any questions about what's in your contract. You know, always check your contracts. We're not talking about mm-hmm. doing anything that's shady or, or against a contract mm-hmm. that you've signed. If you need legal advice, get legal advice. Neither myself mm-hmm. or Adrian are giving you legal advice. We're not an no. attorney. I have trouble spelling attorney. So let's just make mm-hmm. that perfectly clear. So uh, again, so after you making sure it's okay, your database is where the gold is. You know, yes. and and that is uh, that is the thing. And 
and always have a backup of it as long as again as long as it's allowed it's legal. yes now if you're a bank and you're the primary source of your referrals or leads are coming from bank clients do not take the i mean you guys use your best judgment don't do anything that's going to get you in trouble but yeah. The, the clients that you are working with, your referral partners, making sure that you have their contact information and pertinent details about your relationship somewhere other than uh, your company's CRM. Yeah, because sometimes we've seen this. And, and again, mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, it, it's, it's probably the norm or the expected that when you make an announcement, you're going to move, you can pretty much bank on, and, and there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with this. That, that's your last hour in that office. Correct. That as soon as you make that announcement, they're going to change and, and, and everything. And they're going to change everything, all your passwords, uh, everything. And again, I, I certainly understand that for their own protection, you know, to make sure you're not going to do something uncool. So we're, this is not a discussion of what's right and what's not. We're discussing what's likely to happen is, uh, is have all this in place before, again, as long as it's legal, as long as it's allowed, have all this stuff in place, all this backup information in place before you make an announcement, assume that when you make your announcement, that's going to be the end of your, and business and Carl, this and, might you know, sound, let me say one yeah. more thing here just real quick whatever you do if you're making a change don't throw rocks on your way out you're a class act adrian and i just i just you know i oh, love thanks you carl and how you made things happen and 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 your your organization i'm not saying this happened in adrian's or mm -hmm. happened or didn't happen right we're not talking about specifics here for anybody but even if somebody starts throwing rocks on you play the high road right don't mm -hmm. throw rocks back just just keep your head up look forward and, uh, and don't throw rocks at, at situations. People, people re re respect you as a class act of how you act in these situations, even when somebody else is throwing rocks at you. Just be a class act and, and don't fall down to somebody else's level. I'm not saying that happened in your situation, but I just wanted to, to make that clear. Always yeah. rise above and don't throw rocks uh, ever. In all, in all honesty, you should be so focused on crushing production that you shouldn't have time to worry about those rocks being thrown at you, right? That's it. So. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah, we're, we're, because we're moving, we're looking forwards, not back. Yeah. Not back, so. um, right, but forward. again, this might seem really um, common sense to a lot of originators that have been in the business for a while that have made a transition before. But Carl, you touched on this. I've been in the industry for six years, producing for four and a half. So I didn't know necessarily needed, sorry, I might've cut out for a second. Yep, okay. I didn't know that I d needed to necessarily have a backup plan on this. Okay. So this is something now going forward, how I would have prepared, you know, maybe differently or, or make sure that I continue to do this is to have a database and some sort of tracking mechanism for my clients, referral partners and all that good stuff. All right. So um, I, so I've made my, I've, I've made my decision. I've, I've picked my place. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with You're my prepared. Career. Yeah. I've, I've prepared yeah. with my, I got my database in preparation. Let's talk about a transition mm -hmm. team. What does that look like? And what do I need to have in place? So, and this isn't necessarily in place in every company out there and probably it's in place in far few that it is the majority. You know what I mean? It's definitely the minority, but it is pertinent to maintain current success in your production versus suffering from that fish hook effect that we did talk about um, in episode one, Carl. So there, there has to be a system and a well-oiled system put in place for you to immediately plug into. Otherwise, you can't spend not even day one figuring out how to rebuild that. Okay. So there, and, and you have to be honest with your current team that you are the current company that you're moving towards. There has to be appropriate staff put in place in that transition team. For example, if you're closing, 20 to 25 units a month, they can't just give you one loan partner and half a processor. When we say half a processor, it's, you know, you're sharing it with someone else that, that will not work for your current business. It has to be, you know, two to maybe three and definitely one processor put in place, depending upon, again, the workflow and the system that, that they're currently operating out of and why that is key why a transition team is key. Number one, they know how that system already works within their own company. It is not your team trying to plug in, figure it out, and not understand that there are certain, you know, policies and procedures put in place that weren't where you were previously, okay? So yes, it's awesome that transition team can currently handle your volume and you can continue to produce, but more importantly, that, tr that transition team will guide, lead, and educate your current team that you're bringing on board with you. Okay. So that is so, so, so key for success right there. Yeah. I can't hit on that enough. 
I would go to the point to even say, if you're thinking of making a transition and your company that you're moving to doesn't have a team put in place for you, then highly, highly reconsider that transition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And don't, don't like, that's a great point is don't go by kisses and promises of what we're going to put in place. Make sure it's already in place for the transition because yep. you're going to need it. You're going to need it during that. My God, you, you, we always need help. Never more than this time though. Correct. And, and, you and they know before you move, not after. Correct. And they know that team knows the struggles that you're going through. Occasionally, yeah, you're going to run into a road bump with one of your referral partners sending a referral to your old email address, you not getting it until it's 10 days before close and the contract's been sitting there and no one knew about it. And yeah, that does happen. But that team is so well versed with, with large producers making that transition that they understand it. They deal with your emotional little vent. And then they say, you know what? We understand you're frustrated. This is how we're going to fix it. And we'll make sure that we deliver. Love it. Or... Or, hey, you know what? That's an unreasonable expectation to set for your agent. You're going to have to, you know, they're bad that they sent it to the wrong email address. You've only blasted it out 8,000 times that you've got a new email address. So let's get an extension for five days. Yeah. All right. Like that. So we talked about the transition team. Uh, have we covered that? Yeah. All right. I mean, if you have more questions about it, as always asked, there's more details in my notes. But really, the, the key point of this is there better be one in place. Okay. And uh, let's talk about, uh, so I'm, I've got my transition team in place. Mm -hmm. um, by the uh, 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 let's talk about like marketing. Like I've, I've yeah. made my announcement and I'm, so, I, I'm going to start marketing. What do I do? So this was key for me because I, I really thought out this transition. Okay. It was not an emotional one. I was prepared. And one of my main points was, as soon as I make this change, I want the, my world, my, you know, where I'm heavily prevalent, prevalent is social media. I want everyone that knows, likes, and trusts and works with me to know that I've made this change, why I've made this change, and how my contact information, if it has changed, has changed, okay? So I want everyone to know how to get a hold of me and that I'm still their number one mortgage gal. You know what I mean? So I prepared my strategy well before I even announced my switch, okay? Because like we said, once you never know, once you announce that to your current management staff, how that, how that, announce, how that decision is going to be treated. They're either gonna shut you off right away or make you work out two weeks, which doesn't happen very frequently in our business, no, right? No. So what I did, and because social media is my main platform to reach my clients, referral you know, partners, you know and you know what? Let's do this. I'm, I'm looking at the clock. Yeah. Let's leave this as a cliffhanger. Oh my God. The I was on a roll, Carl. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> the, ultimate, the ultimate cliffhanger is, is uh, I've got all this in place now. What specifically do I do? How do I make my announcement? What do I say? And how do I have that marketing? So the people that's referred to me in the past will keep referring to me and everybody still has confidence in me. How do I do that on social media? What do I do on day one, day two, day three? I'm just sitting here looking at notes. You've got it mapped out. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what, what does a database blast look like? Uh, and, and we're going to go into specifics on this. And let's do that on the next episode. Does that sound good? Sounds good, Carl. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, hey, guys, uh, thanks so much for being here. Again, if you want a copy of the notes, uh, and we'll send you the notes in, entire, in their entirety. You don't have to wait for all three episodes here to go up uh, if you're watching this uh, live and uh, as we're releasing them. Uh, you can get all the show notes right now, which is step by step of exactly uh, uh, what we're talking about here. Uh, just go to loanofficerstrategycall.com, loanofficerstrategycall.com. Just put in the notes that you would like to. Um, uh, you'd like a copy of the uh, of the notes here from uh, from Adriana, and we'll get a copy of these notes. Uh, do us one more favor. Uh, feel free to forward this to your friends. Uh, this is the number one podcast because of you and your efforts of sharing this out. So uh, we'd appreciate it if you share it with your friends, go on iTunes, give it that five-star review, help us get the word out so we can have even more epic guests, even though nobody's more epic than you, Adriana. Yeah, I was about to correct you on that, Carl. Yeah, Thanks thank so you. much. I, I that. When I meant more, I didn't mean more better. I mean more of them. Okay. All uh, right. Okay. All that's, right. that's truly what I meant. That's that was a really good back track. I like but it. No, no, no. That wasn't, that wasn't what I meant. More, an even more numerous amount of epic guests like Adriana. There we go. Thanks, so, Carl. Uh, I appreciate it. All right, cool. So uh, again, on behalf of myself and, uh, and the most amazing Adriana Bates, uh, branch manager, uh, active loan officer. And by the way, just make it clear, 
these numbers that we're spitting out is just your personal production numbers, not yep. the other loan officers working. So not my you, other rock stars that I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not coaching the other to rock be stars me. That's yeah. working <laughs> your branch. Uh, yep. other loan officer working. This is just your own, uh, your own personal production numbers that sure. we're using here. So cool. All right, guys. Uh, I think that's it. Go to loanofficerstrategycall.com. Get this, uh, get this uh, show notes that we got here. And uh, uh, after that, we'll talk to you and go over your strategy call. Let us know if you want it with Adriana specific. And we'll see you right here on the next episode of loanofficerfreedom.com. Thanks a lot, guys. See, uh, uh, see you on the next episode. Mm-hmm.